I got to remember to keep this on up here, but it's safe for me to take it off when I'm back here because I'm out a little bit further from you. And honestly, it's so much easier to sing with it off. But one day we'll be released from this. Amen? Amen. Looking forward to that day. Um, well, welcome to worship and welcome to Waterville United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're here. And let me just tell you, for those that are listening outside these walls, have a lot of things going on here within the church. Uh, in the section, in the section, we're remember to continue to wear masks, social distancing, and also we're having worship in the courtyard for those that do not come inside. That is going on out there. And also, too, remember we have people with our radio broadcasting uh, that Art is doing as well is getting out through these walls into the parked cars along the street. I don't know the number of those that are doing, but I know that that is a very effective tool to reach people for Christ. Uh, and also give opportunities for our community to listen in to our worship services. And if you're not doing that, we have a live stream. Live stream is going on right now, and Tim is up there running that and making sure that everybody is in focus and is queued up and ready to go. And also, too, if you can't do that, we have a recorded service. Just go on to the, our website and watch that at a later time and get plugged in. But during this time, also, we have some people that are working behind the scenes in two locations. One in the choir room uh, with our children's church. Stephanie is doing that during this time from 11 to 11.30. And uh, children from uh, ages from 4 to 6th grade are invited to attend there. Uh, and also in our fireside room downstairs, uh, we have no family. So little, a lot of things go on inside this little church. And so even though we, we're here together, there's other people that are getting the word of God. Uh, and that is exciting to know that we have these technologies today and these tools that we could use at this time to glorify God. But a lot of things are going on. So let me just, just say again, welcome to worship. Welcome here to Waterville United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here. And also our special speaker today, Pastor Oki, is with us today. And he'll be bringing the Word of God. And we're looking forward to hearing what God has laid on his heart to share with us today. So our vision is share, celebrate, and teach God's love. And our mission is to serve and love and connect with and, and connect and give. I was going to throw another word in there, connect with God, but uh, this is a time that we can do that as well. And we should do that weekly. We connect by connecting with God and others. We cultivate personal families and community relationships. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Thess Thessalonians 5, verse 11. And in Philippians 2, verse 3, 4 says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value uh, others above yourself, not looking uh, to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Let me begin with a word of prayer. Lord, and Father, we love you. Thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for leading us and directing us in the paths that you give us. Thank you today to those that come into the church doors to hear and be under your word. Lord, it's so, it's so encouraging to see others come in with smiles on their face. Though we can't see them, we see that in their eyes. We thank you for all the many things you're doing in our midst. Uh, thank you for loving us. And thank you for sometimes the patience you have with us. But thank you for the correction in the life that you give us. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for this day that you've given. And we will rejoice and be glad. In Jesus' name, amen.
in thinking, oh, well, I don't know if I can get my fingers to move that fast, especially to hit the, the notes that need to be hit. But we've entered in the house of the Lord this morning to worship Him. So let's stand together with unity and with, with a loud resounding voice, with our mask on. We're not going to shout this out, but just join with me as we stand together. Follow along. When we hunger, we cry to the Lord, help us, the Lord. When we thirst, we cry to the Lord, help us, the Lord. God who created the heavens and the earth, hear our cries. Lord, our God, quench our thirst and heal our hunger. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Christy Wiggle Polinski, I hope I said that right. I 
and Ron and Luke Payton heal and, and to heal our land. Uh, we have a lot of things going on in our world, and, and there's peace still that is happening uh, that we do not see, so we give God thanks there. Dear God, teach me to connect to others. Yes? Okay, Gary and Renee. And I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask those questions here in a moment, but thank you for reminding us about that as well. God's wisdom for us and our congregation during this pandemic, for all health care workers who are getting weary, and for the blessings God promises to all who are faithful. And as our brother back there has shouted out, the need, is there any other needs uh, of prayer concerns that we need to know about at this time? John, can you give us that name one more time, please, for the, those that have Gary heard? Gary and Renee. Gary and Renee. Okay. Bremeyer, did you say? Bremeyer. 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 You know, it's so hard to hear, and it's so hard to hear when you're speaking behind the mask, but thank you. Um, are there any others at this time? Honduras, this Hondurans, Honduras in the storm. Amen. We'll continue to lift those that are in the path of this hurricane. I know in Florida as well, and in Honduras, uh, I know Florida has uh, declared a state of emergency as well. As well. So let's pray for our nation, and let's pray for, uh, for God to heal our land and bring the unity that is needed throughout the country. Uh, let's take a moment and spend some time with God as we pray to Him. Lord, gracious God, we love you, knowing, uh, knowing the things that are going on in this world, the, the greatest gift and, and knowledge that we know as Christians and believers in Christ, that we know that you are in control. Of all things created and unseen, Lord, you are in control. And Lord, that brings the believer uh, just peace of knowing that. But still yet, we have anxiety on things as well. But Lord, we know that you are in control when we give you praise. Lord, for these that are listed on the prayer list and those that have been mentioned in our congregation this morning, we ask that you put your healing hand uh, upon them. Give them peace. Let them feel your presence and knowing that you are with them. But we know in dark times we sometimes feel so alone. But as believers in Christ, Lord, we, we know that you are with us, walking with us, beside us, and holding us on. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today and to worship together corporately. Uh, in this time, I know it's tough, but that we can come together and sit together and just be under your word as believers. Lord, it's just encouraging. Uh, Lord, we need to be encouraged by others more. Uh, Lord, we need to uh, spread your love uh, in ways that, uh, Lord, we're, we're really kind of trying new ways to do that. But Lord, us, during these times, let us spread your love and the opportunities that you give us. Lord, the blessings on Pastor Oki today as he brings your word. Lord, the word that you've given him that you've laid on his heart. Allow him to speak clearly and boldly. And Lord, I pray that lives will be changed through your word today. Lord, we all need you. And Lord, for those that don't know you and know the sound of uh, our voice today, Pastor Oki's voice, if if somebody does not know you today within this within these walls of the church or by radio or by live stream, 
Lord, we pray that today they make the decision to follow you. Lord, uh, so many times we fail to think about the other avenues you've given us, but Lord, praise you. We thank you for the technology you have and for those that are running into art and, uh, and also for Tim and those that do all the technical things. We thank you for that to help that transition in your word get out through these walls. So today, Lord, may you be glorified in all things as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk about technical things. I was uh, in the bar room and practicing my special this morning. And uh, just to let you know how, how long I've been singing, I was singing by a, a cassette tape. <laughs> and guess what happened to the cassette tape? It got eaten up by the player. So I'm still going to sing it, but I'll sing it a cappella. A cappella. And, uh, and as I sing, uh, just as I sing, I hear the music in my head. So uh, even though I'm singing, you're not hearing the music, I pray that the music... It will be heard in your head and in your heart. Uh, this song has a wonderful message, and it's entitled Lean Water. I feel your touch, I feel your heart as I'm lying here alone in the dark. I hear your voice gently say, come to me. I've longed for your love like the earth longs for rainfall. I'm weary, Lord, I've wandered this desert too long. Uh, in scripture, 
The words of God says this in John 4, verses 4 through 7. This time he had to go through Samaria, and on his way he came to the town of Sychar. It was near the field that Jacob had long ago given to his son Joseph. The well that jo Joseph, Jacob had dug was still there. And Jesus sat down beside it because he was tired from traveling. It was noon, and after Jesus' disciple had gone into town to buy some food, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well. Jesus asked her, Would you please give me a drink of water? And bless the reading of this word. Good morning. It is great to be with you today and always a privilege to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the church. I'd like for us to pray together. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ stepped out of heaven. He walked across the universe and came to be born as a baby in Bethlehem. He grew to be a man. He lived for 33 years. Three of those years were as an itinerant rabbi preacher before he was crucified on a cross and rose again from the dead and promised to come again. I believe Jesus came for three reasons. And the first one was to communicate God's unconditional love to us. The second was to build a bridge or a way for sinful people to get to God. And thirdly, to build relationships with people so God could utilize them to tell others about God's love and purpose long after Jesus left planet Earth. And so Jesus did that with works healings, miracles, acts of love, touches of forgiveness. And he also did it with words, teachings, one-on-one -on -one conversations, relationship building that led to eternal decisions. Jesus walked across the universe and then walked around a tiny triangle of land called Galilee for three years. And through his works and his words, he changed the lives of hundreds of people and those hundreds of people changed the lives of millions of people from that day to this. As Jesus walked across the universe and across Galilee, he calls you and me to take a walk. Not across the universe, not across Galilee, but across the room in which we stand at a meeting or a party across our, our business office to the, to the office down the hall from us, to the next desk in the school room, or the next foursome in the, in the golf outing, or wherever it is. And he calls us to do that so that we can befriend people so that those people can know God as a friend, Savior, and Lord. Now, by now you've probably caught on that in the church we call this evangelism or our witness. And before anybody gets too freaked out about that, let me tell you this. That the root word of evangelism is evangel, which simply means good news. And I know that you are already sharing good news. So, for example, when there's a new baby that comes into your family... I know you're sharing the good news with your other relatives and your friends. Well, when that new baby grandchild comes in, I know you're calling all of your friends, all of your neighbors, and you get out your cell phone and you've got those 150 pictures of that cute little baby boy or girl, and you're going to say, look at this, and you're not going to let them go until they see all 150 pictures. Am I right about that? We share good news. When you get that well-deserved promotion at work, don't you tell somebody? When you get a different home, 
You invite people in and, and, and so they can see your house. Or you get a new car, you don't leave it in the, in the garage, but you drive it so that other people can see it. And so you are already sharing good news. And evangelism is us simply sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with people. Now, in the scripture today that, that Matt read for us, Jesus is traveling through an area called Samaria. And I want to try to use this story today to answer, to answer some questions about our evangelism and our witness. And so Jesus is in Judea, which is in the southern part of, of the Holy Land, as we might call it today. And he's traveling to Galilee, which is in the north, and he passes through this land that is called Samaria. He takes a walk with his friends, with his disciples. He comes to this place that hundreds of years ago, the ancestor Jacob had built a well. He was the leader of Israel at that time. And it is lunchtime. The disciples are hungry. Jesus is tired. He sits down. He puts his back against that well. And the disciples go to find lunch. And as they do, a woman approaches the well to draw water. Now allow me to talk with you about the single greatest gift. The single greatest gift that any of us can ever receive is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship is more valuable than a mansion overlooking the ocean. It is more valuable than a Lamborghini Musilego, which sells for about $300,000 today. And it's more valuable than a 15 carat engagement ring. Right. This relationship is where Jesus Christ enters into our hearts and brings God God's unforgivable, unconditional love and forgiveness, purpose, security, and eternal companionship. And friends, you can't work for that. You, you, you can't earn it. It is only received as a gift from God through Jesus Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul, a little later on, gets a hold of this, and he writes this for us. I think it applies. He said, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, why would he do that? So that God can have this relationship with us where all the barriers, all the questions about our worth, all the doubts about our destiny are taken away. And Paul later sums it up and he says, thanks be to God for this inexpressible gift. Now in this story, Jesus is miles away. But he looks into Samaria and he sees this woman. And I know that he sees her because of the billions of people that have walked across this planet, Jesus Christ has seen everyone because everyone is his child. Everyone he, he loves unconditionally. Everyone he can see the needs that they have. And so Jesus walks into Samaria, not by chance, but by choice. And he does this because he wants to see this woman. He sees her need. He wants to build a relationship of love with her so that she can receive the single greatest gift. He comes to Jacob's well at noon. He knows that she is going to be there. He wants to talk with her alone. And so he sends the disciples away to buy lunch. And as she comes, the God of all eternity initiates a conversation with her. Now let me ask you, who do you know that you can initiate a conversation with? Who are the people in your office? Who are the people in your child's school? Who are the people at the bowling alley or at the pizza those people that you know today, just as this Samaritan woman, need the single greatest gift. 
And your giving that gift, gift begins with walking up to them. Walking across the room, walking across the office floor, walking across the field, and starting a friendship conversation that could have eternal implications. Now allow me to talk about moving out of our circle of comfort. Now if I, if I ask you to quietly define your circle of comfort, you, you could do that. You don't have to tell me about it. But each of us have a circle of comfort. And we know that the walls of that circle are high and they are thick and it's hard for us to get through them or above them. And talking to other people about our faith is often outside of our circle. I confess to you, it is hard for me at times. I mean, I'm an introvert, and that makes it hard for me to initiate new relationships because I, I wonder how people are going to accept me. I wonder what people are going to uh, think about me or if they're going to even like me or if I even have enough stuff to carry on a conversation that lasts more than about three minutes before they would walk away. I want to say to you that Jesus experienced this as well. His comfort zone was heaven. And he left heaven and came to earth, born in a barn, totally dependent, cared, by, cared for by a mother that was probably 14 or 15 years old. His life and birth were rocked with scandal. And yet Jesus left his circle of comfort. Now, Samaria was enemy territory. 700 years before that, Babylonia had invaded Israel, conquered that land, destroyed Jerusalem, knocked down the city walls, and burned the beautiful temple. And they then took all of the remaining people and marched them back to Samaria, where they would serve as slaves for the rest of their lives. Now, they, there were a few people they were not leadership capacity. They were not going to cause any problem. And so some of those stayed in hiding in Jerusalem for a number of years. But they eventually intermarried with their Babylonian captors. And their children were called Samaritans. And they were hated by the Jews. They were deemed to be traitors and half-breeds and people shunned them and, and ignored them and they hated them. And in the 13th chapter of Nehemiah, it is recorded that all Jewish people had to divorce their non-Jewish spouses and they were to send out any children that were not fully Hebrew. And so they hated these people. And 700 years hadn't changed anything. And most Jewish people would rather take a walk around Samaria, which would take about four days or 100 miles, rather than take the two-day route through Samaria and risk meeting a Samaritan. But not Jesus. Jesus leaves his circle of comfort. He breaks every tradition, every moray of Jewish culture, and he walks through Samaria. And Jesus walks into the zone of the unknown. I mean, what will he find? Contempt? Hatred? More threats on his life? Or perhaps a person who needs love? You see, his purpose is to meet her. The Samaritan woman. But how will she respond? What will she do? Will she ignore Jesus? Will she reject him? How would he know? But Jesus sees her. And he begins a normal conversation. Would you please give me a drink of water? And the Samaritan woman is, is taken back. And she says, well, how come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan, for a drink? You see, she remembers the past. She remembers the, the rejection and, and the shunning. 
And don't we all? It is all so hard to get over. No, I would say it's impossible to get over without Jesus' help. And this help is available in the zone of the unknown. I mean, if it were possible by our, our own human power within the realm of our human knowing, we would have gotten over things and fixed things long ago, would we not? But we can't. But in the zone of the unknown, Jesus works. Outside our comfort zone, beyond our power, God does things that we cannot do. He breaks down barriers that we cannot break. He heals what we cannot heal. He does what we cannot do. And Paul again said it in 2 Corinthians, for the sake of Christ, I am glad when I am weak. Because when I am weak, Christ is strong in me. So what will we find in the zone of the unknown? Well, the truth, my friends, is that we will never know unless we go there. Now, we may find fear and rejection and intolerance, but we are certain to find that God is with us. You see, it's not about us being the seasoned or, or superior Christian. It is simply about God with us. God operates in the zone of the unknown. God has a purpose for your walk. God has someone for you and me to meet that needs the Lord, who we will probably never meet in our own circle of comfort. I want you to know it's hard for me to meet people. But when God wants me to meet someone, when God has a purpose for, for my walk, then I am able to be driven to that person. To, to be placed in that conversation as, as uncomfortable as, as it might be. And sometimes I get more uncomfortable in, in my circle of comfort than I do in the zone of the unknown. Because Jesus, just as Jesus promised, he, he tells us what to say and how to say. And it gets easier because he's there and he helps. And I'm just the one who's available. You, you see, friends, there's a, a spiritual sense to, to all of these meetings and all of these arrangements. Because, you see, we, we go not alone, but the Holy Spirit goes before us. And the Holy Spirit goes with us. Now, somehow, Jesus knows that this woman is not physically thirsty. But she is thirsty for a relationship of eternal love. You see, in that day, all of the women went to the well at first light. They came to, to draw water, to use it for, for cooking and cleaning and, and, and bathing, but it was also their, their great conversation time where the women could, could talk and, and they could reminisce and they could gossip. And so they came at first light and they loved that time. But not this woman. She stayed away. She preferred the heat of the noonday sun over the heat of their gossip. So Jesus says to her, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. And she looked at Jesus and she said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw from this well and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? And Jesus says to her, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. But anyone who drinks the water that I give will never thirst, not ever. In fact, that water will be like an artesian spring, gushing up fountains of endless life. And the woman says to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so that I won't ever get thirsty again. 
and never have to come to this place to draw. Now, we might want to think this is a good place to end the story, right? But, but Jesus has yet to offer her the single greatest gift. He has yet to offer her this eternal relationship with God. And we're going to say that he's going to blow it right here. Because he looks at this woman and he says, go call your husband. And she honestly says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, and this is where we just want to hope that Jesus will stop. But he says, you're right, you don't have a husband. And the man that you're living with now is not your husband. And in fact, you have had five husbands. Now, can you see the spiritual sense in, in, in this relationship? Can you see that the Holy Spirit knows exactly what she needs? So many broken relationships, so much failure, so much hurt, so much searching. She needs an eternal spiritual relationship with her creator. And friends, don't we all? The Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit knows people's needs and, and leads people to us and leads us to people. The Spirit helps us begin those relationships. We see the tear in their eye. We hear the crack in their voice, but we see the slumped posture and, and the, the sadness, and the Spirit gives us the words to say and the courage to say them. Sometimes, the Scripture says, we don't even know how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us. And so what do we do? Well, friends, I say we we just walk. We take a walk. We, we pray and, and say, Lord, I'm available. I believe in your power. I believe in the power of your Holy Spirit. Place someone in my path today that I can begin a conversation with. That I can walk up to in, in the hopes that I can build a relationship with them so that, so that I can share the single most important gift. Help me to start that relationship. Help me to listen. Help me to serve those outside the zone of, of, of my comfort level, in the zone of the unknown. And when the time is right, help me to pray. Help me to share. Help me to talk. <clears throat> Give me the opportunity to share the single greatest gift of all time. Jesus prayed that prayer. He walked through Samaria instead of around him. He met this woman who had needs that only Jesus could fill. And he began a friendship with her. And he gave her the greatest single gift of all time. A relationship with her creator that just kept welling up inside of her like an artesian spring to eternal life. <clears throat> and do you know what she did? She received that gift. And almost immediately, she leaves that well and she heads back to her village of Sychar. She doesn't even take her bucket, which is a sign that she is never coming back there, there again. But she goes into Samaria, and somehow she, she gathers these women of Sychar that have been against her for so long. And she looks at them and she asks perhaps the most important question that is ever asked. Could this be the Messiah? The one who knows everything about me. What a gift. What a gift to share. The woman took a walk. She left her bucket. And she shared that gift with others. The evangel shares.
shares good news with people. And she becomes the first evangelist to Samaria in 700 years. You know, it's my hope that every United Methodist, that every Christian across this planet would be a takeable one person. It would be a person that would get out of their comfort zone. And, and enter into the zone of the, the unknown and be looking for people to meet, to walk across the room or across the office and an opportunity to build a relationship that eventually leads to the sharing of the single greatest gift. And I want to say to you that I think it's great that you're going to build this new building. But let me also say to you that people aren't just going to come here. Now, now I'm not saying they aren't going to drive by and marvel at, at what's going on. I'm not saying they're not going to even drive through your parking lot and maybe stop and walk for a while. And there may be even some that are going to come in and look around. They may even come to a worship service or two. But they're not going to come here because of your building. They're going to come here because of Jesus Christ. And the invitation that you extend to those people through the Holy Spirit to come and see. To allow Jesus Christ to fill them with what they really need. The thirst that cannot go away. But that eternal spring that wells up inside of them like an artesian spring. Friends, that's the greatest gift. And when you offer it, they will come. They will stay. They will thank you. And together you will all praise Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, I'm available. I believe in, in your power. Power that I don't have. And Lord, you know already people around me in my neighborhood or in my office or in my school who need you. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to understand that people that cross my path don't cross my path by coincidence. That each of those persons are in my sight and in my path because of the divine opportunity. Give me those opportunities. Give me the courage. Give me the strength to share the single greatest gift. It will make a difference for them, for their families, for this entire community, for your kingdom, and for your world. We give you thanks.
Amen. As you leave this place, know that you leave this place not alone, but that Jesus Christ walks with you. And the people that you see this afternoon and tomorrow and all of next week and in the future, I don't believe they're coincidence, but they're a divine opportunity for you to build a relationship with him and share the single greatest gift. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom Go from this place.